is Eileen, Eileen Denver. I'm one of the volunteers at the Gertrude Jekyll Garden at the Glee House Museum. And um, I'm going to show you a bit about the garden this morning. Uh, you may have heard of Gertrude Jekyll. She's really one of the great saints of gardening uh, in England and in the United States. Um, she died in 1932, but in the years before she died, she designed something like 400 beautiful gardens in England, Scotland, Ireland, and several in the United States. Ours is the only one that's still in existence in the United States, and we're very proud of it. We're restoring it right now, bringing it up to date. Some of the flowers kind of invaded other flowers and so on, so we're doing a little work on that and I'll explain that as I take you around. But the wonderful thing about Gertrude is the fact that we actually got her. She's really the patron saint of cottage gardening and larger gardens. Um, she was extremely popular and successful in England. She was the author of 13 wonderfully written books about gardening. They're great to sit down and read even today. She wrote hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of articles for gardening magazines, and she really put gardening, especially the informal gardening that she introduced, um, she loved putting it on the map. And uh, she, as I say, she's really kind of the queen of the English cottage garden. When the cottage garden came over, this she, she liked to say that the cottage garden was a friend of English manor houses and in America, of places with picket fences. You've seen many a cottage garden and you're going to see this one stuffed with flowers, stuffed with greenery and things of all sizes and heights, um, drifts of color. Um, you'll get a sense of how she changed gardening forever. So let me take you around the garden and we'll talk a little bit. Um, our east border, okay. This is in sun all day long. And we're moving it to become what we call the cool border with more purples and blues. Right now it's still partly the hot border. You'll see the yellow foxgloves here. Um, the yellows, reds, oranges of the hot border uh, are coming in along here. So that's foxglove there. Little dahlias there, which will be a yellowish peach. This is all going to be white. That's the Shasta daisies. Um, the alliums are through. They were purple when they were blooming. They're spectacular. Evening primrose here. Um, a, it's a rudbeckia. It's kind of a black-eyed Susan. There'll be a whole bunch of them with that gorgeous kind of orangey color. Gertrude liked hosta. She liked blue hosta better than the yellows and greens and we are working to get more blue hosta to go in here. This will all be a blaze of yellow. It's a kind of rudbeckia. It's called a herbston. That entire thing will be lit up with uh, basically black-eyed Susans. This little swath there is globe thistle, and they'll come out a sort of beautiful pale purple with a lovely texture to them. They almost vibrate. They're, they're just beautiful. Give that another week. Um, mixed in in this area is something left over from the, the hot border days, and that's red bee balm everywhere. It's still thinking about blooming. All of this this is a form of lilac. Um, these are viburnums. Um, these were all a mass of blooms just a few weeks ago. These are blue geraniums, and they were a mass of blue, and now we cut them back, and they will be a mass of blue again in a week or three. Um, more shastas that will be white, um, and these will be blooming blue again. Shasta's over here, and then as we move into later in the summer, there will be a lot of purple 
what they call turtle head, which I love that name. Um, this whole extent here is the dahlias, which I, which were pink and white. Back in here is a little group of dahlias, which are going to be coming up red. I believe it's going to be red. And these here, these polka dotty things are pulmonaria. Uh, they bloom in the spring and they're wonderful. Um, now they're kind of finished for the year. This is all something called the pearl and it will all be little tiny white blooms all speckled all over. It's very pretty. So this is our west border here and um, as you can see lovely shades of green and that's all right now but soon this will be a riot of yellows, whites, creams, um, and way over there some globe thistle with little pale purple tops. Um, so come back in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, so looking down along the border here, uh, as I say a few years ago this was all purples and light blues and so on. Now we're moving it towards the yellows. Well, it's a big process and it's a slow process. So we still have lingering purples and um, moving this towards the hot border with its yellows um, is a big project. So um, one of the things Gertrude loved, and she said every garden should have them, is benches. So we have benches for people to walk around the border and then sit and contemplate and maybe read a book or drink some iced tea or whatever. So we have benches. Uh, we're getting another as part of our uh, restoration. And um, she liked people to take their time walking around the borders and noticing the changing colors, the changing heights, um, the, the spiky plants versus the soft lying down kinds of plants. Um, the monster plants, like over there, that's the lictern, which is um, ooh, meadow rue, the big tall plant that um, we're still working out how best to stake that because it's wonderful and it's meadow rue, the lictern. Um, down along here, we're going to have more um, yellows. A few purples this year and later that will change. Um, you'll notice the stakes ahead of you. Those are all supporting dahlias. Gertrude loved dahlias and we love dahlias. They're a project to take care of, which I'll tell you about in a second. But as we move towards it, you'll see that they are, they need staking. They need tall staking. Um, and pretty soon those stakes will be covered. You'll have a mass of mostly creamy and peachy uh, dahlias over here. Down here is our, our little area that will all be yellow um, black-eyed Susans, yellow Rebecca. And um, there the peonies are over. You've got more yellow clematis um, going up the, that old uh, stand that we have over there. Um, a, a remnant of the previous border here uh, is the spider wart. It's purple blooms, lovely purple blooms, but purple won't be here for long. That'll be moved somewhere else. Um, at the very end of the border, you have a beautiful willow tree. That's the that frothy, almost pinkish one, uh, which will eventually turn mostly green for the summer. Um, and Gertrude wanted it in that corner. Um, looking over here, is all at the bottom. That was all hellbore. Um, and that came pretty much almost at the end of the winter. It's still cold and it's blooming. And it's all these kind of quiet pinks with green edges and creams with green edges. And up above, uh, looking kind of uh, finished for the season, that's all lilacs. Um, so let's go down here. The, um, the sort of back of the west border. This is what we call the Allee. And this follows some of the principles of Gertrude's design. First of all, she loved roses. Some of the roses that we had huge 
a mass of yellow roses here that had finished about a week ago. Um, over here you've got your red roses overhead. There will be more red roses. Um, she loved roses. She called for more of them down in the uh, quadrant at the other end of this little walkway here. Um, she loved the arches uh, that held up the roses. So you've got the, you walk through the arch with the uh, flowers above you and around you. And very soon on both sides there, we're gonna have the hydrangea, which is on both sides, blooming like crazy. And uh, we'll have the, the sort of pinky, creamy colors of the hydrangea. She'd love to have, um, down at our feet here, she loved stone paths. And she loved to have stone paths edged as this one is, it's a little hard to see, with upright stone to sort of define the path. And then she also loved to have flowers drooping over paths a little bit to give the feeling of a crowded, cottagey kind of garden. Coming upon the what is called what we call the quadrant. One of the things that's special about here is something that Gertrude loved and which you often have in uh, cottage gardens, which is herbs mixed in. So we have here, we have rosemary. There will be some rosemary in that main border uh, shortly. Uh, we have sage, we have chives, uh, we have cat mint, um, and, uh, and of course we, we have also something that you see a lot in England, which I personally love. Just beyond that big pot, you'll see the, the sort of pale green flowers of ladies' mantle, which you see a lot of all over England, often mixed with pink roses. Uh, usually in England, um, they're a lot bigger, because whatever England does, they seem to, they seem to have, everything is bigger. That's ladies' mantle. You've got your spent chives just beyond it, looking like they need to be snipped. And we'll get to that. The, uh, the volunteer group is maybe 10 people. We work several days a week. Um, it's, um, it's 10 people sounds like a lot, but it's not a lot. To, to, it's a big border, a big garden rather, uh, with long borders and complexity of all of this along here. Um, so it's, um, we're a hard working group, but we sure love working on a Gertrude Jinko garden. Um, it's just, it's just an honor. So.